Hey guys, what's up? It's Kevin for the win. We're back for another edition of Diablo Free. Today on the channel, we are taking a look at the Season 25 starter set for the Monk Class Monkey King's Garb. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Monkey King's Garb set armor. Two-piece bonus. Your damage take is reduced by 50% while sweeping win is active. Four-piece every second sweeping win spawns a decoy next to the last enemy you hit. And on top of that, when a decoy explodes, a thousand percent weapon damage for each stack of sweeping wind that you have. Six piece slashing tail, tempest rush, wave of life have their damage increased by fifteen thousand percent for each stack of sweeping wind that you have active. So as you can see here, we're using mostly a full set of the Monkey King's garb. But to help augment the power, and keep in mind that there is a necklace for this particular build, you want to run the Captain Crimson belt. And the boots, because Captain Crimson goes with just about every build. Two-piece bonus, 6,000 life per second. Reduces cooldown of all skills by 20%. Reduces all resource costs by 20%. Three-piece bonus, damage dealt is increased based on the amount of cooldown reduction you have. Damage taken is reduced by the percentage of cost reduction that you have. So very, very important to keep those in mind when you are using this particular set armor. To help with this build, Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, Convention of Elements, Cesar's Momentum for your braces or wrist area. For the knack, you must run some Woku Shines. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, for the weapons, Ventral Wind, increase the maximum stacks of Sweeping Wind by 10. And you want the Wan Kum Lao weapon, hitting with Tempest Rush and activating Cyclone Strike. Both deals 572% increased damage. For the skills, Crippling Wave, Rising Tide, I would recommend Tempest Rush Flurry. Definitely run that. Epiphany, Desert Shroud, Sweeping Wind, Inner Storm, Binding Flash, Faith in the Light. And Mantra of Salvation Agility. And last but not least, Crippling Wave, Rising Tide. For the skills, Beacon of Yitar, Harmony, Seize the Initiative, and Restless Assault. Kanai's Cube, you must run this. Balance, Mantle of Channeling, and Ring of Royal Grandeur. Do not deviate from this. If you do, it's not going to work for you. Now, for the follower, my recommendation, Broken Crown, Flavor of Time, Nemesis Bracers, everything else that you put on this build is pretty much entirely throwaway, as those Emnate abilities aren't going to help. The most important thing is probably the Broken Crown, Flavor of Time, Nemesis Bracers, and maybe to a lesser extent, the Gold Skin. Um, keep in mind that the Shards are not featured in the video. Look in the link in the description to find out about the Season 25 Shards that you should use, because... There's somebody who's going to run into this video after the season's over and then will be confused as to why I'm mentioning shards that are no longer available in the game. So make sure you pay attention to the link in the description for the shards that you need to run. For the purpose of this quick showcase, I will show you a Greater Rift 60, 65, 70, and 75 that will show you how this does Torment 13 through 16 difficulty. First thing that you need to do when you get into the Greater Rift is obviously cast a sweeping win then you want to activate your tempest rush so that you can activate your four and six piece bonus keep in mind unlike the patterns of justice set armor you cannot waste your tempest rush so you can't keep holding it in what you want to do is lightly tap towards the enemies and don't constantly hold it in also keep in mind because of this particular build burns through a lot of your spirit because you're having to constantly reset the amount of sweeping wind stacks you have I recommend that you pop your Epiphany whenever possible. That way you can get fast Spirit Regeneration. Anytime that you see that you're incredibly low on your Spirit while in Epiphany, use your Crippling Wave as it will teleport you to the closest mobs and you will be able to get back in a lot of Spirit that way. Case in point, as you see here, you build it up pretty quickly within 5 seconds of attacking lower level mobs. So definitely do that. And pretty much always maintain that you have the maximum possible stacks of your sweeping wind. So that way your Tempest Rush, when it hits with the decoys, does a tremendous amount of ability. And also keep in mind that Epiphany is here for whenever you feel like you are going to take a significant amount of damage. Keep in mind on the lower Greater Rift, such as Greater Rift 60 through 65, you're not probably going to run into too many situations where a lot of enemies can one-shot you as you're going higher up in the Greater Rift because this armor has a tendency to be a wee bit of a glass cannon because the monk class in general is not very tanky by nature that you want to be specifically careful keep an eye out for aoe effects in general because they will make your life pretty miserable with the set armor build now in terms of optimization how would you optimize this armor well for starters 
My recommendation is that you put cooldown reduction 8.0%, maximum cooldown reduction, wherever possible, because you are using Captain Crimson, and you can increase the amount of damage you do tremendously just by having cooldown reduction 8.0%, wherever you can get it. Subsequently, I would recommend cost reduction wherever possible, 8.0%. That way you can reduce the amount of damage you take, which will allow you to do higher, greater rifts with this particular build. From there, I would recommend on your helm, crit hit chance at least 6.0%. On your gloves, I recommend these free stats, crit hit chance 6.0%, crit hit damage 50%, and attack speed at least 7.0%, 8.0% is a probably a bit more preferable, but it's a matter of whether you get good rolls or not. Make sure you have at least those free stats, that way you can increase the amount of damage that you're doing tremendously, which will ensure that you'll be able to go up 10 more greater rifts than if you didn't have those free stats on your gloves. Then from there, what else would you want to power up on the set? My recommendation, anywhere that you can get Tempest Rush at 15%, definitely do so as that is your primary source of damage. Subsequently, I would also recommend anywhere that you can get your Sweeping Wind to 15%, definitely do so, but the priority should be in your Tempest Rush first as because that's the main source of damage because of the four and six piece bonus. And then everything else in Sweeping Wind is just pretty much to help mitigate some of the problems that you might run into as you go higher up in the gray rifts this particular build sweeping wind will not do as much damage which is why you have to rely more so on your tempest rush in terms of fervor optimization from there what you would want to do is you would want to augment every piece of your gear that is ancient legendary or primal ancient legendary with legendary gems that you level up after a greater rift run my recommendation is that you should level up your gems to at least level 80 before augmenting them. Preferably the higher the level, the more attacks that they will have. So that is basically what you want to do. Between level 80 to 100, I would recommend. Depends on how hard you find your Greater Rifts progression going. If you feel like you're struggling quite a bit, it's probably in your benefit to augment at level 80 and not wait to level 100 as that is pretty high tier play. Anyway, for the Rift Guardian, what you want to do is make sure you have your Sweeping Wind stacks activated. Then you'll cast a Blinding Flash to paralyze it. And then you will use your Tempest Rush because of Setsaro's Memento. You will pretty much one-shot most Rift Guardians with that particular strategy. Like I said, this is a pretty fast, speedy type of armor. It is a glass cannon, so you have to be very careful with AoE effects and overextending. And always keeping an eye that you have enough spirit. Because if you run out of spirit, this armor will make you go splat very fast for the legendary gems i recommend on this particular build take gook first and foremost because it's very important go out of swiftness because you want to get as much cooldown as possible on this build so that you're not waiting in between certain things that was greater rift 60 four minute clear time so you could see pretty fast and efficient not as fast as the pattern to just the set because i know somebody in the comments will in fact mention that Okay, so we're in Greater Rift 65, same strategy as before. Tempest Rush, after you have set up your Sweeping Wind stacks, always keep an eye on your Sweeping Wind stacks and make sure that you maintain them so that your 4 and 6 piece bonus do the maximum amount of damage when you channel your Tempest Rush. But then it's pretty much the same strategy as before. You activate your Epiphany, that way you can mitigate the amount of Spirit that you're bringing through, as well as reduce the amount of damage that you will be taking against various enemies as you progress through your greater rift runs um now for those of you who perhaps maybe are just starting with your seasonal journey and maybe have never played a seasonal journey in diablo 3 as i mentioned before in the beginning of the video the monkey king's garb is the season 25 starter set for the monk class so basically it works this way starting on chapter 2 and ending on chapter 4 every time you complete a seasonal chapter journey you will get two pieces of the hatred's gift so when you complete Chapter 2 of your Seasonal Objectives, you will get two pieces of the Hadrid's Gift. Ch upon completion of Chapter 3, you'll get the other two pieces. Upon completion of Chapter 4, you'll get the final two pieces. You're guaranteed a full set of the Starter Set Armor for the class you pick. In the case of the Monk, it is this set that you see here, the Monkey King's Garb. Keep in mind that you will not have access to your Captain Crimson in the beginning. I will talk a little bit more as to how you work towards building this particular build in your Seasonal Journey in a second. So you're always guaranteed your full six pieces of your starter set for the season. You're not guaranteed ancient legendary pieces. And you cannot have primal ancient legendary pieces dropped from the Hadrid's Gift. Because the pre-rest equip 
for getting Primal Ancient Legendaries to drop in a seasonal character is beating a Greater Rift 70 solo, which you will not be able to do at the beginning of your seasonal journey anyway, so you will not have a chance of Primal Ancient Legendaries spawning. There are some rare chances where you might get Ancient Legendaries to drop from your Hadrian's Gift, but it's very few and far between, so keep in mind that you're going to have to farm for Ancient Legendary and Primal Ancient Legendary pieces to further optimize this armor on your own. Very important to keep that in mind. So, as you're progressing for your seasonal journey, obviously you'll notice that you won't have Captain Crimson because that's not part of the Hadrian's Gift. How do you get Captain Crimson? Well, my recommendation to all those new players is do a lot of bounties. The more bounties you do, the higher a chance you will run into a goblin that has the potential or ratio percentage to drop the plants that way. And on top of that, the more uh, bounties that you do, the more material cachets you have, which also have a decent chance of dropping the plans for Captain Crimson. So if you do enough bounties and you do enough, uh, basically, Nephilim rift runs and everything of the sort, you are highly likely to encounter the plans eventually. So just keep running them until you encounter the plans. It's very straightforward in that retrospect. Um, also keep in mind, as you're doing bounties and Nephilim rift runs, you will also have a chance to get a whole bunch of blood shards, which you're going to need to get our pieces of your gear as well. Uh, keep in mind that in order to get these Cesaro's momentum, you're probably going to have to run through a lot of Nephilim rifts and everything of the sort. After you've gotten the plans of Captain Crimson, my recommendation is to run a whole bunch of greater rifts for the rest of the items that you don't have. Usually in bounties, you're probably going to drop into the weapons. Uh, fairly easily and you probably will get the bracer fairly easily as there's not a very low chance for them dropping there's not that many bracers in particular a wrist that are very low percentage of dropping for the monk there's a very few there's only like three or four that actually drop for him that are exclusive uh, to the monk or her for that matter depending on which uh, gender you pick for the monk um, if you're having trouble getting one of the uh, weapons for him. I recommend that you just get a whole bunch of rares and put them in the Kanai's cube and upgrade rare to a uh, legendary one. Uh, chances of you running into these weapons is um, a decent chance from uh, doing a whole bunch of Kanai Q recipes of upgrading her. My recommendation though for the weapons, definitely just run a whole bunch of Greater Rifts run. If you're doing 2-3 to three hour Greater Rift run, where you're clearing the Greater Rift within 2-3 to three minutes, which is why I show my guides the way I do to show you how to farm efficiently and fast and appropriately, because if you can clear figs in 2-3 to three minutes, you can do a lot more runs within 3 hours than if you did a very high Greater Rift, which will take you a lot longer, which means less runs, less roots. That's why I show you the way to go with these things so when people come in the comments and be like well why can't you just show us how high you can go in the greater rift i'm not showing that for these guys did you play diablo enough you know how to clear a greater rift 130 and 150 like i know how to do you know on your own this is for the newer players and the less experienced players that need a starter set guide which is why this is a starter set build all right it's level 65 greater rift, 4 minute clear time, you start one up by 30 seconds. As you go higher up by 5, you're probably going to add about 30 to 20 seconds on your clear time. That's just naturally going to happen. Same strategy as before. Activate our sweeping win, then activate our epiphany because now the monsters are going to do a bit more damage to us. Cast your tempest rush. Always keep an eye on your sweeping winds. If you run into a leap pack that you feel is going to do a lot more damage than you can handle, you can obviously cast a blinding flash to mitigate some of the problems. Again, for the gems, go out of swiftness, bane of the trap, or bane of the stricken. It depends on your personal opinion. I recommend bane of the trap though, and I would recommend either take gook. Or a Bane of the Trap. It's really a matter of your opinion, uh, personal opinion. For me, I like Bane of the Trap, Teguk, and Bane of the Stricken. Some people like Goaka Swiftness for extra cooldown. Teguk and Bane of the Trap. It's a matter of your personal opinion. I think Bane of the Trap is going to help you more because when you activate your Blinding Flash, you're going to be getting an increased amount of damage as opposed to Bane of Stricken. You don't need it so much with this particular build. Play around with it. See which legendary gems work best for you and follow that. My guides are just that, a guide kind of to help you out. And then you kind of tweak it and tune it to your own personal playlist. Now, in terms of the Monkey King's Garb, where does it fall in the tier list for Diablo 3? 
Well, some people would consider it back in the day S tier. However, when Power into Justice was introduced into Diablo 3, obviously the Monkey King's garb lost a lot of favor and now is sitting somewhere between upper A to lower A tier for the Monk. It is still one of the better options for the Monk. Obviously, the best end all to be all would be the Patterns of Justice set because that Tempest Rush works a bit stronger, requires less optimization, and uh, is one of those ones which is a bit more forgiving and newer player friendly because they don't have to keep an eye so much on spirit thanks to the bonuses in the set armor which help regenerate spirit naturally. So keep that in mind. As you can see here, we're running out of spirit. So what we do is when we're in Epiphany, just pretty much hit a couple of crippling waves and you'll get it back within three to four seconds, most of your thing. Okay, there we go. And pretty much when you get higher up in the Gritiverse, it's probably in your benefit to even ignore some of the lower level monsters and just try to go elite pack farming. And whenever you kind of run into low level monsters, don't spend a lot of time on them. Just go as fast as possible to the next elite pack because you're just kind of trying to go for optimal clear time so in terms of tier list where does this armor sit again it's an a tier armor if you want the s tier build you want to go uh pattern to justice overall tier list the end all the be all armors are still whirlwind barbarian gears of dreadland despite all the nerfs that has seen mundanuku's regalia uh then some people still claim it's firebird i still think it's chantotum's veer because it can do better as well as the um, Typhon's Veil set, which I think still does generally better than Firebird. We're going to be talking about Firebird in the next video anyway, so keep an eye peeled if you're waiting for a Wizard starter set build, which I will be covering because the armor did get nerfed, so we have to talk about the nerfs and how you can kind of help mitigate some of the nerfs that's seen with certain items that are available in the game that won't take away too much from your build, and you're already probably going to incorporate some of them into the build naturally anyway, um, so keep that in mind. Here we go. Let's get rid of these particular enemies here. Fast clear time, hopefully. So, um, really, still, when it comes to if you want high leaderboard, you're probably going for the Whirlwind, Gears of Dreadland, Mundanungu, Firebird. And then everything else comes after that. Um, Pirates of Justice probably up there. I'd say I'd put it probably before Mundanungu just because how fast it could clear things. But some people prefer Mundanungu. Um... You know, so my recommendation for people playing seasonal, I would say stick with this till you get to about Greater Rift 70, uh, or until you get your pattern to justice pieces and then swap out for that because that's just the more efficient Tempest Rush and it's the easier one to play. Uh, this one to really push high Greater Rift, so I'm talking about Greater Rift 130 to 150, requires a lot of optimization where you have full pieces, ancient legendary, perfect rolls, perfect augmentation with the highest gems possible. Even Primal Ancient Legendary stats, everything of sort. It takes a lot of customization and optimization to get it to perform at high risk, And it will still struggle compared to our armors like Patterns of the Justice. Also keep in mind, uh, this armor is not very team friendly. Because you're probably going to push things a little bit quicker. And then in some cases, a little bit slower than our builds. Case in point, this is Greater Rift 70, Torment 15 difficulty, 3 minutes, 46 second clear time. So that's how that does. One more Greater Rift run. I want to show you how this does in Torment 16. So keep that in mind. Uh, future things that are going to be coming up for those who have been asking in the comments. The next videos that I'm doing is the Firebird's Finery. Then after Firebird's Finery, we will take a look at the final starter set, the Spirit of Iraq set for the Witch Doctor, which is very underwhelming to say the very least. From there, then I will start covering the S tier builds for Season 25 like I normally do for every season. So you will see the Wrath of the Wasteland set armor. You will see the Gears of Dreadland. You will see Mundo Nugus. Chantotom Veer you will see. You will see Masquerade of the Burning Carnival as well as the Legacy of Dreams Poison Scythe build. I will also go over stuff that has been buffed and nerfed. For buffs, we're going to take a look at the... Rothmon set armor because they buffed the six piece bonus so it does a little bit better than it used to do uh, We also are going to take a look At stuff that has been nerfed. We're gonna be taking a look at embodiment of the Marauder So keep in mind. There's a lot of stuff coming up I'm gonna pretty much cover all the stuff that got buffed and nerfed first then we'll move on to S tier builds Then we're gonna move to the mid tier to then low tier builds throughout the whole season I will cover every build Keep in mind, like I always tell my viewers, this is not a Diablo 
channel primarily. I do cover Diablo, and I will be covering Diablo at least two to three times a week for the next couple of weeks because Season 25 is very fresh and still new. Uh, but keep in mind, this is a variety game channel, so I do play a wide variety of games on here. So definitely make sure you check out the content that's not Diablo-related as well because I cover a lot of things like Monster Hunter. I've also covered Diablo 2 from time to time. I cover stuff like Pokemon. I've covered stuff like Dead by Daylight. So... You know, definitely make sure you check out that content as well if you enjoy the Diablo content. But uh, usually I put out about two to three Diablo videos a week for the next month. And then as we go further through the season, there'll be less video content per week because we'll be going through most of the builds and have covered everything. I don't like to retread on things once I'm done with the season. I'm pretty much done with builds. And then I will focus on our endeavors and our things. So keep that in mind. That's how we roll. As I mentioned before, I know people have been requesting that I cover certain builds. Please be patient. Like I said before, starter builds first, then things that were buffed and nerfed, then S tier build. If you're very, very, very enthusiastic and want to see a build for a current season, definitely just check out old season 24 videos because it's not outside of Firebird and Rathmon and Embodiment of the Marauder. Nothing in the older builds of my videos from previous seasons has changed. So you can use an old video's information and just pluck in the shards that you need until I actually get to the video season. But most armors haven't changed much from the last time I've covered them. Most. Only exception again, Rothmon, Firebird, Spirit of Iraq, Embodiment of the Marauder, and Shadow's Mantle, which I already just covered uh, last week. So keep this in mind. But don't worry, there's going to be more Diablo 3 content. Just be patient. If you haven't seen what you've seen yet or wanted, it's coming eventually. So just keep that in mind. And like I always tell everybody, thank you so much for all the support and love that you've given the channel. And I have a lot of subs. And I always positive and kind comments about how you like the fact that I cover some of the less meta builds as well as the meta builds on the channel. As you saw there, what we did was we blinding flashed the Rift Guardian. Actually, making sure to we maintain our sweeping winds and then Tempest Rush, and after a couple hits, the decoys explode. problem with the decoys a lot of times is they don't trigger too often. I recommend going in diagonal patterns because that's something that they said they were going to fix, and I've never really seen it fixed the way that they, it's supposed to be intended or everything in the sort. So, you know, diagonal movement sometimes for the Rift Guardians I would recommend more so than the lower level monsters, which pretty much are, are going to pop anyway from Tempest Rush. All right, let's see the clear time there. As you saw, I didn't die in any of these runs, so that's always important. Three minutes, 33 second clear time, greater of 75. Greater of 80 will be 4. Greater of 85, it would be 430. Greater of 80, you add another one, so it'll be 5 minutes, and so on and so forth. That's going to do it for the Monkey King's Garb starter set armor. As always, a like on this video is greatly appreciated. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, definitely consider doing so as it helps the channel grow. And I will see you for the next Diablo Free video, which is Firebird's Finery. Till next time, guys.